God never shall die. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Let your word perform power and authority. Let your word transform us. Let your word change us. Let your word empower us. We are good to speak to us. Not to think as in the power of Let us hear transformation in our lives by the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Welcome back to today's Kingdom Principles. We started our series on Godly Relationship last week. This month we have been talking about activating, all of this and activating the supernatural experiences through Godly Unity. As brothers and sisters, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were with, together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. You know, we said that God made man to relate. And so God relationship is very important. And that the people who relate to or how we relate to others. Have great psychological effect on them. If we relate well with people, it makes them feel good. They live with a feel of social worth. They go with some form of dignity. But those we do not relate well with, those we insult, those we demean, they leave our presence with a crushed spirit. Anytime they saw us, they begin to panic. Because they are afraid what will come out next. I mean, we crush their spirit and destroy them. But this should not exist in the body of Christ. That is why we are talking or studying about the pillars of Godly relationship. We saw from the book of Hebrews chapter 13, one to three, and we said that the author of Hebrews was exalting the Christians at that time. And these were basically or mainly Jewish Christians who were confused about their faith in Christ. They, they, they had left Judaism into Christianity and were facing intense persecution from their fellow Jews. And many of them ran away from their home for safety. At that time, it was such that it wasn't uh, fun to say I was a, I am a Christian. You could 
could not just say I am a Christian because the Christians were endangered species, if you like. People were reporting Christians to the authorities and they were killed. So it was normal for these Jewish Christians who were scattered to be inward looking and protect their circles. So by this way of life, they were destroying some important virtue. Open godly blessings and stood upon them. One of it was godly relation. That is why we are talking about the pillars of godly relations. So last week we said that pillar number one, godly relationship is driven by good brotherly love. Yep. I am Godly relationship by brotherly love. And for that matter, does not show discrimination. relationship and choose who I should relate well to. Whether man or woman, whether rich or poor, educated or not, godly relationship will not discriminate as to who as you need to be. Because it is, it is based on brotherly love. Praise the Lord. He said godly relationship. It's a mutual interaction between two or more people. The kind of association that should exist between us as a people. For us, human beings, it is all right and normal for us to relate to people because what we can get. Or how the person accepts us. Or because of a specific interest you can also get from there. Or because the person's appearance appeals to you. You know, for example, all of us may be working at a place. We have to relate well in order to see progress in that institution. Bosses must relate with uh, 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 workers in the company. Finance people must relate with uh, uh, security people. Production must, production must relate with procurement. So all these interactions, relationships are needed to build a stronger institution. And sometimes in the workplace, we have, we have people who relate well with others and some who do not. It's their preference. That is human life. But godly relationship does not work on this is what I want and this is the person I have chosen. It is a relationship that pleases God. It is built on the principle of God's word. And so godly relationship is driven by brotherly love. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Give me a talk. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why in verse 1 it says, One loving one another as brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So since God is a relationship, it's 
built on godly and brotherly love. And therefore, that's not show favoritism. Godly relationship shows kindness regardless of whoever they come into contact with. That is, I don't have to know you before I show kindness. I don't have to know you before I relate well. Praise the Lord. So he says that let brotherly love continue. You should keep on doing it. Regardless of whoever you are showing love to. It is not based on discrimination. Yes, these were Christians who were running for their lives. They had left their homes because of persecution. And so they want to be somewhere safe. You know, if you open up, someone can just know where you are and report you to people or the authorities. So it was all right for them to know you, my one, to remain secluded or closed in their circles. But the author says, cheerfulness, let brotherly love continue. Nothing should stop it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he says that you should not forget doing good to others. Mama showing hospitality to others. Because by so doing, some have entertained angels unaware. You can forget some other things, but not for the relationship. Maybe your angel sent, sent you away by God to bring you that help. You know, Gideon in Judges chapter six. Uh, Judges chapter six, yes. You know, was hiding on the field. No Meanwhile, they needed somebody to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. Then a stranger shows up. How Gideon related to that person? Even that stranger was what brought him into the limelight. That was how Gideon became a leader and a judge in Israel. When he saw the angel, if he did not relate well with him, the angel did not come like the angels we know, white, pure, with them flying wings. But he came as a person. If Gideon had not related well with that angel, he would have lost his miracle. In the same way, Abraham also received angels. He did not know they were angels. In fact, one of them was in the persona of God. Call it Theophany, God in human form. Theology, Theophany. And at that time, Abraham did not know he was ministering to God and angels. But because of good relationship, it opened the womb for Sarah to have a son. So, brothers and sisters, the child of God, you should not forget to show good relation or godly relationship to others. Because the person next to you can be an angel sent by God. Godly relationship, as we have said, is driven by brotherly love. And because it does not discriminate, when you want to show brotherly love or any you must consider yourself same as that person. You must 
assume the place of that person. That is what will motivate you to show brotherly love and godly relationship. Verse 3 says that continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison. Continue to remember those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. You know, from the author's viewpoint, you see that he is talking to a people who have stopped showing godly relationship with him. And an important uh, 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 virtue in the Christian law. Oh yeah, Papa. He says, don't stop it. It tells us that before they were doing it. But something came up and now they have stopped. My understanding probably is this. Because these people were running away for safety and were afraid of their lives, they wanted to hide themselves or they wanted to keep their circles closed. So if someone comes their way, they want to examine that person before they accept him. Because the practice at that time was this. Because they were all running away for safety. You just have a knock at your door one day. And then it is a Christian who someone probably has recommended or has sent your way. Or he heard, he heard there's probably some Christian somewhere. So let me also run to him for safety. But because others have taken advantage of this practice and have betrayed innocent Christians, destroyed their lives, the Christians at that time were afraid to open up to such people again because others have done it and they have suffered it. So they were not prepared to do it also. So they have stopped an important aspect in their practice. Because, because as they were opening up to receiving some of these people, they were also saving their lives from destruction and persecution. But because some bad nuts, you know, hypocrites, Try to use that same means to betray those Christians, they were stopping that practice. That's why the author is telling us we should not stop it. God is also telling you today, don't stop it. You know, you try showing kindness to somebody, but that person spied on your weakness and took advantage of you. Today people come to your home and ask for help. But because some of these people themselves are criminal and they want to spy on your house and then come and steal from you, we become closed and don't want to open up to help. But like the author of is saying, we should not stop doing good. We should continue to remember and do good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this time he says that remember those in prison. Hallelujah. Amen. You should continue. You should continue and remember God. God. You know, it should not be, you should not follow the principle of people who say, uh, 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 twice, uh, once bitten, twice shy. Godly relationship is a continuous thing. That's why the author is telling us to continue. Remember those. 
you know what he's trying to say is that you should always keep them in your mind those people in prison one you know the, the the prison he uses or those mistreated as the author puts it is giving us a situation in life it's describing some situations of people praise the lord Hallelujah. and so that your situation today than someone tomorrow but you should keep that person in your memory remember that person all the time don't let your situation today make you forget situation of others praise the lord hallelujah and you should not discriminate against them because they are in prison praise the lord we must ensure that we have we have them in our minds we keep them in our hearts always remembering them in doing good in praying for them in showing them good uh, 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 kindness praise the lord i mean this was a virtue the church was supposed to do but they were stopping it no or they have stopped it and as but he says reject. that you should continue to remember praise okay. the lord you should continue okay. to remember okay. this is what the author is instructing the church and you know, he was not he was not telling us to remember those who are sitting in their offices and are free those who can reciprocate that you are offering but those who are lower on the social ladder our relationship should be better all day so we, must, we must remember them in our prayers and in kindness that is what godly relationship is about it does not show discrimination those who are free and those who are in chains when one finds uh, 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 when one finds himself in, a, in, a, in an unfortunate situation, so that should not be a recipe for rejection. We should remember ourselves as individuals, that we are all one people. We have a common goal, we have a common target. We, we are all children of God. We are all Christians. And so the situation I find myself in today should not be the basis for my rejection. It should not be the basis for you to give up on me. You should continue to remember me in your prayers and in your kindness. Even those who are mistreated, the reason is that you should continue it because you should do it as if you were the one. Or the yet today, as if you are the one in prison. Today, I will never be. Or you are the one being mistreated. And I want to worry why I ask. Today, you are the boss. In the air, today you are madam. In the air, well, today you have it all. There will be a the person doesn't have it but think that if it had been you how would you want them to treat you you know if we consider ourselves as those people i'm sure our relationship would always be different because time is not static and it keeps on changing someday it may be you the same way others have found themselves in prison and some people have found themselves in an unfortunate situation it can be you also and you would wish somebody that same for you but remember when you had it you did not do it 
says, you should remember as if you are the one you must not forget to ask ourselves this question what kind of treatment what kind of treatment would I have expected if I were the one no wonder the book of Luke says, Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you will not be happy when they do say, Why are you doing to others? Godly relationship does not discriminate. It's based on the pillar of brotherly love. Because we consider ourselves the same as that person. The second greatest commandment, as Jesus put it, commandment. Yes. You know. They ask Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord with all your heart and blah, blah, blah. Said, the second is unto this. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, men always perform better. If what they are doing, they know they have an interest. If they know that what I am doing, I would have my share. They would do it better. For example, in fact, you know, it's difficult these days getting people who volunteer to work for free. You hear people say, how much will I get if I do this? And sometimes the most uh, 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 painful you say is that I must, uh, uh, even though I'm working for church, but I, they should pay me because I must give offering. He's thinking about his interest. So once you are putting the person on, on, on a paycheck, there will be that commitment. But if no incentive is coming from anywhere, we do it anyhow. But the question is this. Today it is someone else. But what if it is you tomorrow? When we think of someone's situation, as if it was us, it will make us demonstrate godly relationship. Because we will all not be servants forever. One day, those of us who are serving today will also become leaders. And the tide will change. Godly relationship must be based on brotherly love. Not because of not on selfish interest, not on discrimination, because things can change. Today, it is someone in prison. Today, it is someone in an unfortunate situation. You are free. Don't think. That's how it's going to be. Demonstrate godly relationship. Because it can change tomorrow. It can change tomorrow. Love your neighbor as yourself. How you would want people to do for you. Do same. I watched a movie. A Christian movie. Beautiful. And this Christian uh, entrepreneur who has businesses all over in many countries, you know, wanted to go on retirement. 
and he wanted to leave the company in the care of someone he could really trust. So there was this Christian brother in his company. Everybody spoke well of. So he wanted to test him and give him that company if he passed it. So he said he was traveling out of town. And then the company awarded a contract, a huge contract. Contract. You know, to one contractor who won the bid. And the boss went behind the the, uh, the selection committee no all osage selection committee and met the one who won the bid and said no sir yeah we win the contract no do this work with all your heart but i want you to set up this man for me because i want to hand over this to his care I trust him. But I want this to be his last test. So tell him that boss is traveling. And that you can do a good job. But if he the supervisor, who is this Christian the man wanted to hand over the company to? If you agree for the contractor to use substandard uh, building materials, say, Mama, or the second grade materials are you, Juma? I mean, all the money that he will save, they will share it. And they will give him the bigger portion. The man thought that, after all, this is not a house I am going to live in. And more so, I'm going to make money out of this uh, deal. So he yielded to it. They finished building this house with inferior materials. When the boss came, he called them to a meeting and said, I wanted to leave this company in your care. But I wanted to be sure if you could pass the test. But you have failed. And since this house, which I intended to build for you, has been built with inferior materials, it is not fit for habitation. So I can't give it to you. And that day, dismiss him from the company. He thought he's not the one to live in that house. So if he agreed to the proposal to use inferior materials, yes, he doesn't care because someone else is going to live in it. Not knowing, they wanted to give it to you. See, we must relate with people not because it is in our interest, but we must relate as if it is us in that situation. You know, um, a renowned pastor in the U.S., McDonald, put on his Facebook wall a video. And in that video, this renowned pastor dressed in a shabby gray haired beard and long, you know, some nasty thing be. And then went to sit on the gate of one of his campuses. At his church. And, and the members did not recognize it was him. They did not know it was their head pastor who had dressed like that. So in the video you see people pass by. And, and when this beggar was asking them for you know, they would pass by. Because he's 
is nothing. Just a beggar. You know, they didn't mind him. But shortly after, they saw this beggar push the cart, or that trolley who was begging with into the church. And everybody, some of them wanted to go push him outside. And he was also pulled forth in his way. The security and the officers were coming to push him out. But some of them were aware. So he managed to push the cart and went to the stage. And then he decided to uncover himself and then they saw it was him and this is what he said okay if we're gonna look love like our father in heaven loves we don't get to play favoritism if one love the way our father in heaven loves we should not play favoritism. God relationship does not play favoritism. Regardless of who that person is, we must show good relationship. I pray that we would learn to show godly relationship without favoritism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, let me conclude by this story. A very mean old uh, mountaineer, like someone climbed, like his hobby, you know, a mountaineer, and then he was, he, was, he was very wicked, very mean. He, I mean, even his wife was afraid of him. One day he fell sick and died. You know, there were no funeral directors back in the hills at that time. And so embalming was not practiced at that time. So after some few days, they dressed this uh, man who was dead and placed the corpse in the coffin. And so, as uh, they carried the coffin to the cemetery, one of the pale bearers, those who were carrying the coffin, stumbled by the way, and the coffin fell down. And miraculously, the man got up and sat down said where are you taking me and they said you fell on the mountain and you died you fell sick and you died so we're going to bury you but now that you are awake let's go home sorry and so the man lived for one more year and he was wicked more than before very very wicked then he fell sick again and died. Oh, yeah, you. And then they had to prepare him for burial. No, we can see it. And as the pilgrims were taking the coffin to the cemetery, when you look up, you. they got to the same place one of them tripped. <laughs> and the wife said, Please watch your steps well. Otherwise, you will trip again. And the coffin will fall. Most of us have known difficult people by way of relationship. So we don't ever want to come into contact with them. The wife said, Watch your way well. So you don't trip again. I can't live with this wicked person one more year. And that is the mindset of some people about us. Some of you, managers, leaders, and, and so on, your subordinate wish you had died. 
paying for you know what I want to watch our nurse we are man when paying we because of how you relate with them and I'm gonna have for the one child of God in a godly relationship that's not no discrimination in town you know you mean as the Lord bless you that means sure for watching that shit in Jesus name oh Jesus shall be for the book I want you to pray and tell God Help you. Don't That is not based on discrimination. Ah, not because of what you have. Or yes, I will or who that person is. And I don't mean we are quick to show respect to politicians and leaders and rich people. Tempara ye tre ibu tre isikafu. But we become mean to some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a godly relationship does not work on discrimination. Help you love everybody. Because it is the commandment of God. Open your heart and pray now. Because time changes. And that person can get into goodness tomorrow. Story will change. As in best, you may then become a subordinate to him. Pray that God help you relate well with people. Father, I want to thank you for tonight for your word that has come forward to us. I pray that oh God touch our hearts. Let us relate with people, everyone, on the same platform. Because that is your word. That will not show kindness based on this creation. We will not do things because of the advantages we will get. But we do it because it is God. Thank you. Help us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanks. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you for Amen. watching. Sure. And make a date with us, same time, 7 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday Amen. for our kingdom principle. The Lord bless you. Stay safe and keep working. Amen. Amen.